Are you a massage or bodywork practitioner who's interested in equipment or amenities for your business? Touch America wants to save you money while providing quality equipment backed by personalized customer service from our family-owned company in North Carolina. Touch America offers a full lineup of treatment tables to go along with Halo Therapy design and supplies, Shirodara kits, speakerless sound equipment, relaxation loungers, and more. Receive a 20% discount at touchamerica.com by applying your ABMP member discount code found on abmp.com slash discounts. Visit touchamerica.com today. Darren Buford. And I'm Kristen Coverley. And welcome to the ABMP podcast, a podcast where we speak with the massage and bodywork profession. Our guest today is Don Castiglione. Don has been a licensed massage therapist since 2010. She became geriatric massage certified in 2011 after training under Dr. Sharon Pusco, Daybreak's previous owner. Working mainly in retirement communities, assisted living facilities, and memory care units, Dawn has enjoyed a career in massage therapy with her focus on seniors and those with degenerative conditions. After teaching for Daybreak for nearly a decade, she became owner, director, and principal educator of Daybreak in 2022. She enjoys guest speaking at support groups and major events for Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and looks forward to helping massage therapists everywhere take their skill and passion to the next level, helping them to embrace the geriatric specialty in massage. For more information, visit daybreak-massage.com. Listeners, Don also wrote Massage for Elderly Clients with Diabetes in the new November-December 2023 issue of Massage and Body Work magazine. And that's the topic of our podcast today. Hello, Don, and hello, Kristen. Hello, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Don, we're thrilled to have you here. We loved your article, and we're excited to talk to you about it a little bit more, go a little bit deeper. Um, let's jump right in. Can you explain the importance of massage in addressing blood circulation problems in elderly clients with age-related diabetes known as non-insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus, or NIDDM? Absolutely. Um, any diabetic truly has extra, let's say, dangers sort of built into their bodies um, that massage therapists should be aware of uh, before laying hands on them to massage. Um, and then if a client is elderly as well, there are even more things to think about. So with the elderly in general, we're, we're looking at thin skin, um, brittle bones, uh, they bruise easily. A lot of them are on blood thinners, which makes that even, you know, more of a risk. And they all already have a, um, compromised circulatory system. The veins are either, you know, thin walled, plugged up, or uh, the valves in the veins are not working efficiently anymore. So if you add all of these things to the issues that diabetics suffer from, um, you see that, you know, immediately, oh, I need to be awake and prepared with, you know, what I should and shouldn't do so that we're actually doing more good than harm <laughs> uh, when we give a massage. It's not just a, a sequence of, movements or strokes, um, but they need to be done intentional. And so that when you approach um, a diabetic elderly body, we're looking for um, some of the same things we would if they weren't elderly, but of course at higher risk. So we're looking for any cuts or abrasions, swelling in the extremities, edema, pitting edema, things like injection sites. So if they're receiving insulin or they have had a recent blood draw, uh, these kinds of sites could, you know, pose a threat for infection if we go too close to those sites. And so we all know uh, that diabetics really need to be careful of infection, especially in the extremities, because it'll lead to death of the tissue Um you know, often gangrenous conditions and eventual amputations, which um, Dietrich was so instrumental in, um, you know, paving the way to to try and figure out how massage can can best cancel the amputation surgeries if possible, and he was successful at doing that multiple times. 
Don, I'm curious, you were mentioning that you know you really need to pay attention to skin, bones, muscles, conditions, injection sites. And of course, a lot of that is done visually, but do you also do a different or deeper level of a verbal health intake with your geriatric clients with diabetes or, or how are you, talk us through that assessment process before you begin the work. Absolutely. With any kind of senior massage, um, the intake is uh, a lot more extensive and thorough and with diabetics even more so. And we, we need to know things um, that, you know, a regular, perhaps a spa or chiropractic office massage therapist may not really delve into quite as deeply. But because we're working usually uh, over a longer term uh, with these clients to help, you know, improve over the long haul, we need to know these things. So things like this are uh, the timing of their insulin, if if they do take insulin. If they have an injection of a certain uh, dosage of insulin, we as massage therapists need to be extremely careful that we wait at least two hours after that injection is given. If we don't, then the amount of insulin recognized by the body seems a little higher. We're sort of flooding the system harder and faster than was intended with the original dosage. So um, it, it, you know, it could throw them, if insulin goes up too quickly, hypoglycemia, your blood sugar can come down too quickly, and that could lead to all kinds of things, not excluding death. If they go into a, a hypoglycemic episode, for instance, they need to, you need to call 911, they need to go to emergency immediately. And so for that reason alone, we we go into a lot deeper assessment uh, when we first do our medical intake before we even lay hands on our first, you know, client for their first session together. Don, the article discusses uh, specific cautions and contraindications when massaging clients with diabetes. Can you explain some of those so our listeners can be aware of that and just Explain why it's essential for that to be top of mind when working with this clientele. Yes, absolutely. The first point is that massage is intended to increase blood circulation. So again, if we are too aggressive, whether they are on insulin or not, if we are too aggressive with our massage, we can throw their system into overdrive um, and sort of amplify things internally. And that can be counterproductive toward their medications that they're taking. Also, diabetics often have poor uh, sensation. Uh, they may have neuropathy, uh, numbness, and what would have been their normal, um, let's see, sort of a gauge, if you will, um, to, to tell their body, ow, that hurts, you know, it's too much pressure. They no longer have that gauge. Uh, and so if they're numb and we're applying too much pressure, we could be causing damage that they're not even feeling. Uh, so that's that's another uh, caution. And uh, they may have skin ulcers as um, a result of the numbness, too. They may have infections or little tiny cuts that maybe we could find prior in the um, examination before massaging. Uh, that could literally save their life in the long run uh, because, you know, not only applying too much pressure, but getting too close to an open sore, uh, especially if we're using some type of emollient, a cream or a lotion, or even worse, an oil, that's just a recipe for disaster. And so, um, yeah, a lot of these things are unique to the diabetic condition. We used to only have to worry about uh, what time did they take their insulin injection, right? So that we could stay away for two hours after. But now they have insulin pumps that distribute uh, smaller amounts of insulin over a period of time to keep things even more level and stable. So they have homeostasis the entire day. And so now massage therapists are saying, well, what if they have a pump? Does that mean we can't ever massage them? And the answer to that is, no, that's not what it means. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the pump, in essence, is getting less insulin into the system 
at the, the point of release. So it's like a slow release tablet that you might take for other things, you know, a head cold or what have you. And so it's bringing the damage uh, likelihood way down so that it's almost like massaging a, a, a normal body without diabetes, only with regard to the insulin. Of course, you need to look at all the other uh, cautions, though, as well, and take them very seriously. Let's take a short break to hear a word from our sponsors. Anatomy Trains is excited to be back in person in the lab with Anatomy Trains author Tom Myers and master dissector Todd Garcia at the Laboratories for Anatomical Enlightenment in Boulder, Colorado. Join us for a new four-day in-person fascial dissection intensive, October 24 to 27, 2023, where you'll have the unique opportunity to see in the most natural conditions possible and dissect for yourself what's under the skin. Visit anatomytrains.com for details. Zibby Books is thrilled to bring you Super Bloom by Megan Tatey, an award-winning novel about a massage therapist and her colleagues who decide to rewrite their story. When Joan meets a difficult client with an interesting proposal, she goes undercover at a Vermont spa to call fun, informative details about the experience. For anyone who has ever been in a massage room, Super Bloom will delight and entertain you. Learn more at zibbymedia.com. Let's get back to our conversation. Don, how do you establish the right amount of pressure? I'm imagining it's through good communication back and forth with the client, but if they're unable to sometimes detect uh, the level of pressure you're bringing, can you, how, how would you determine that during a session? Okay. It's a 50-50 split, really. Um, I would say half of it is really listening with your hands, really listening with your fingers. As you palpate, you start light and you become familiar with their tissue and the denseness or the fluidity if they're retaining liquids. Um, and your hands are really your compass. And so between that and the other 50% is a gentler approach overall. And I say this with caution because geriatric massage is not simply, let's say, Swedish massage with a lighter touch. There's so much more involved. And if you're approaching the senior diabetic body with the senior massage techniques in mind, um, we're going to accomplish a lot more by doing a lot less. And by less, I mean pressure, Darren, to answer that question. So um, a little bit goes a long way. And we are really trying to spend a lot of time on lymphatic strokes with diabetics and um, to get their lymph fluid as well as their blood flowing. Remember that our lymphatic fluids don't have a pump the way our blood does, right, our, from our heart. And so the exercise we do on a daily basis or just movement in general, walking, um, will move our lymph fluid quite nicely. And when you have uh, obstacles to that, such as, you know, diabetics have, then it becomes a challenge. So in essence, massage becomes their exercise vehicle. And so keeping that in mind, will keep our touch light enough. And at the same time, letting our fingers do the listening. So we know if there are extra issues to deal with for pressure. Don, let's talk more about the specific techniques that you would use with a geriatric diabetic client. So the Daybreak Geriatric Massage Institute NIDDM protocol um, includes specific massage techniques such as foot pumping and fluffing. Can you walk us through those techniques? Tell us a little bit more about them and the proper ways to perform them. Absolutely. I'd be happy to. Um, foot pumping is uh, one of Dietrich's signature moves. I believe it was as recent as 1998 that they discovered the importance of and the existence of nitric oxide being released um, through the body as a signaling messenger. So foot pumping 
is going to mimic the muscle activity that happens when we walk, for instance. Um, so just simply pumping that foot is going to keep their muscles alive. It's going to circulate the blood and it's going to produce the release of EDRF, endothelium derived relaxing factor. That's a big old mouthful, but uh, it based it basically is a hormone like substance called nitric oxide. And it's a powerful vasodilator. So what it's actually doing when you have your eyes dilated and your pupils dilated, it means you're opening them. So if it's a vasodilator, we're looking at opening the veins a little wider. So the lining will decrease in swelling so that the blood is allowed to flow more freely. So that's basically why we do it. But then there are so many other uh, after effects that are even more beneficial that continue um, throughout the person's day, really, once we spend at least one minute performing the foot pumping. That's when the uh, the chemical reaction begins to take place. And with diabetics, you can spend as long as you want doing foot pumping. The other movement that we like to perform is a, a hybrid stroke that you just asked about, the fluffing. And so that's the second one. And the fluffing actually prolongs the effects of the EDRF. And it is a hybrid stroke, meaning that it takes effleurage and petrissage together. Dietrich knew that, you know, uh, effleurage by itself, the gliding along the skin, um, could be too much for a diabetic and too much even for elderly. Um, but that petrissage, the kneading motion, um, could also cause bruising and damage as well. And so he combined the two of them together. And with a gentle squeeze and release motion, we can work an entire limb with something called fluffing, and it combines the two. So you're gliding your hands along the skin while you're pulsing your fingers. So it creates a very unique effect, and it really prolongs the benefits of the EDRF that we started with the foot pumping as well. Don, you mentioned uh, just briefly with regards to the foot pumping. Let me just ask a follow-up question with regards to session length. That's emphasized in the article. Can you provide some more insights why the shorter massage sessions are recommended for these clients with diabetes? A shorter massage will accomplish several things. Uh, number one, it allows us to give our full attention to one area without feeling like we need to cover the entire body. And especially with diabetics, we may spend the entire 30 minute session only on their feet and legs. And so also having the insulin issue or any kinds of medications really uh, traveling through their system, anything longer than 30 minutes would overload the system and then start causing the medications again to uh, have a, a, a different effect, if not adverse effect, on the body than the physician had intended. And also, sometimes it's a cost issue, even a cost effectiveness. Um, they may not be able to afford a full hour session uh, every single week. So they may say, well, let's just do this once a month. Well, that's probably not going to yield the best result. We want to get in there frequently rather than longer periods of time with space in between. So I'd rather see my clients on a weekly basis, knowing that we're going to pick up where we left off and and not so much, you know, hit hit everything in one hour and then I'll see you in a month, you know. So those are those are three good reasons why why a half hour is absolutely enough. How do clients express that they feel differently after the session? So they're doing a 30-minute session with these very specific techniques from the protocol. And what is the client impact? What, what do they feel differently between the beginning of the session and the end of the session? How do they express that to you? A lot of times, it will be a delayed realization for them. Uh, rather than just getting up off the table and saying, oh, I'm cured. <laughs> Obviously, we can't cure this thing, right? But we can help them to improve and to feel better. So as they're going through their day, they're starting to realize they have better mobility. They have better balance. Uh, maybe they'll feel a little bit of tingling where they had no feeling before. 
And again, sometimes it's just an overall feeling of refreshment, you know, that they've been refreshed in some way and their body feels more capable in ways that they didn't expect, you know. So it's more than just trying to decrease swelling and move the accumulated fluids and get venous blood return, you know, back toward the heart. It, it's it's more than that, especially for them, because maybe they don't even know what lymph fluid is. But the things that they feel are those kinds of things where their their muscles are alive and they're maybe breathing easier. A lot of times they'll report that I slept really well that night after your massage and I had such a restful sleep. Um, even digestion is affected um, by a really good massage. And and so a lot of those unexpected blessings are how they express, you know, their their feeling of accomplishment after having a session of massage. I want to thank our guest today, Don Castiglione. For more information about the work she's doing at Daybreak, visit daybreak-massage.com. Thanks, Don, and thanks, Kristen. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure, and I'm very excited about the future of Daybreak. That's wonderful. Thanks so much for being with us, Dawn, and for the great conversation today, sharing information with our listeners and for all of the work that you do with the geriatric population. And as we were talking about specifically today, the geriatric population with diabetes. We appreciate you. Members are loving ABMP 5-Minute Muscles and ABMP Pocket Pathology two quick reference web apps included with ABMP membership. ABMP 5-Minute Muscles delivers muscle-specific palpation and technique videos, plus origins, insertions, and actions for the 83 muscles most commonly addressed by body workers. ABMP Pocket Pathology, created in conjunction with Ruth Werner, puts key information for nearly 200 common pathologies at your fingertips and provides the knowledge you need to help you make informed treatment decisions. Start learning today. ABMP members log in at abmp.com and look for the links in the featured benefits section of your member homepage. Not a member? Learn about these exciting member benefits at abmp.com slash more.